Hey everybody, Dual 666 here. Finally, been very anxious to get to this one update I'm going to be having here in November. Things are really busy with the holiday season and this pandemic ever worsening. Uh, lots of stuff going on, trying to keep busy with music, so just scrape together a really big update for this month, and I'm going to try and get back to you guys a little more frequently next month. Don't worry, I got lots of other content coming too, lots of horror related content, and some musical content, and other good stuff for you guys, so. Anyways, you guys know what we're here for. I'm sure you've all been waiting very patiently, and I uh, applaud you so. So, cheers, everybody. As you can see, we've got the giant gala monster going on here. Classic late 50s horror. If you haven't seen it, it's a must. Awesome movie. Total cheese fest, but for its time, this is a fantastic flick. I absolutely love this. So, hope you guys enjoy in the background. And let me wet my palate real quick. If you guys can see, I'm not drinking any more beer right now. I'm making good on my uh, promise to be on the wagon. A little more than three weeks in now, so, hey. Cheers with some Diet Coke. Hopefully the next thing I will eliminate from my life. All right, so the first one we got here. On Bloody Sunday, Danny Trejo's got a minor role in this, which is what uh, drove me to pick it up. It's an extremely minor role. This is a really strange, low-budget slasher film. I think I got this from a more than likely a swap meet or a video rental store that was going out of business kind of took a shot on it. It didn't turn out to be so great. I saw Unrated on there and I figured, God, it has to have something, but it really, it was really, really cheesy bad. Like, honestly, I, I had a fun enough time with it. You know, cheesy slashers are my forte, but be prepared. If you, if you go in and just thinking it's going to be even slightly good, it's, it's really not. This is one of the cheesiest films I've seen in a long time, so. On Bloody Sunday. Got another little uh, Danny Trejo thing here. This one was a little bit better, a little more cohesive, despite being what it looked to be quite a bit more cheap. This was really, really cheesy as well, American Nightmares. Had a good enough time with it though. Kind of an anthology sort of thing with a wraparound story, but uh, like I said, extremely cheesy. <laughs> Tread lightly and uh, take with a grain of salt. This was a lot of fun, I did have some fun with it. And, uh, yeah, that's about all you can expect from it. It's from the people that made uh, Tales from the Hood. I haven't quite seen those films yet. I've heard mixed reviews. But, like I said, I like this well enough. It was pretty damn cheesy and low budget. But you should check it out anyways. A uh, couple of them here. So, first one I've got. These are both uh, disaster movies. So, not necessarily horror. But still stuff that I kind of like to poke around in in the collection. So... First one is Mega Fault. You can barely see the disc in there. This is one of those little sleeves that I get from Family Dollar or some other dollar store. This one very well. This I think this one in particular came from a 7-Eleven actually. And then we have Seattle Superstorm. Also a really, really cheesy disaster movie. It's not much to be said about these, just total CGI cheese fests. I, I used to really, really have a large disdain for these types of movies, but in recent days, uh, they've started growing on me, so I pick them up here and there if I find that I haven't, you know, acquired one of them or so. I probably have spent the last however long amount of time since these came out avoiding buying them, so now they're here. They are really, really cheap. You know, it is what it is. They were fun. All right, I put this one off for a long time, too, because I just didn't think it even looked really good. And I feel like this is another one that got really swept under the rug when it came out, despite having, you know, accredited names, people that made uh, Paranormal Activity and uh, Insidious. I watched this, and, you know, I gotta say, there was a lot about it that I didn't really like. But it didn't, you know, let me down completely, especially being a PG-13 film. This was actually a lot of fun. Dark Skies. I thought it was... Uh, pretty damn good, honestly, myself, for a PG-13 movie, at least. You know, I, I'm willing to uh, give a little leeway when it comes to that rating. Like, it, there's not much to expect from it. It's 
it's a little campy for what it's supposed to be. I, I just don't see it as being a super scary movie, but it was, it was fun. So check that one out as well. All right. Speaking of fun movies, you guys might have caught one of my last uh, vlogs where I was watching uh, this double feature of uh, early 2000s rental store vampire movies. So we got Side Effects and Eternal Blood. These are both tons of fun. There's tons of gore in them, ridiculous plots and acting, and just... This is... I, I found that this is like the equivalent, nostalgically, at least for me, that people that grew up in uh, video rental stores in the 80s. Because I would look at this sort of stuff, and I would just see the covers, and, you know, being so young, it's all so fantastical. This is the kind of stuff that I remember all my friends talking about, you know, if they had perhaps seen some of it. Not necessarily these films, but the period that they come from and just the cliché, super cheesy, uh, just quality of it all. These were both really fun. And, you know, I'm not really into vampire films, like modern vampire films, so these were really fun, just like, kind of throwback -y sort of films so I, I really enjoyed them both if you can if you can find both i would definitely uh suggest that you watch them both together they have nothing to do with each other they're just both solid vampire flicks so check those out guys eternal blood and side effects all right these next ones i have been saving for quite some time so that they could uh you know it would be appropriate to talk about them seasonally so we have Thanks Killing and Thanks Killing 3. If y'all are in the know, you know why there's no number two. So these movies are unapologetically bad. Uh, they're about as atrociously cheesy and low budget as you can possibly imagine. There's just tits everywhere and ridiculous, sometimes really bad and ineffective gore. Uh, these movies are just a fucking shit catastrophe. It, it, it doesn't get much worse, better than this. Uh, I struggled, actually, to make it to the first one the first time I watched it. I don't know. I guess I just didn't get it. The second time around, I really enjoyed it. I'm not going to put these movies down as just worthless. They're a ton of fun. But be prepared for how absolutely vomitous horrible they are. <laughs> so, thanks, Killing, guys. Fun stuff. Like I said, I've been waiting to talk about those films for a while take from my brief little meanderings what you will. Alright, we got some Blu-rays here. We'll get into all these now. Eh, why pick them up? Show one at a time. Okay, first one, this is a Shudder original. Z. Creepy little thing. Lots of CGI. Honestly, this is the kind of stuff that is just, I feel, very run-of-the-mill Netflixy sort of movie. Uh, Maybe not quite even as good as a, a Netflix movie, but uh, this was still creepy, decent little thing. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, you know. It is, I, I'd say, it's not unique in plot, more so it's execution. I, I, I found myself wondering what the fuck was going on in a few parts. I feel like it's definitely a little dragged out, but it was fun enough. You should definitely check out Z. Next one we have, I've been putting off watching this for a while because I heard it wasn't going to be very good. A lot of people put this down that I had heard about when, when it came out. So uh, it, I guess for that reason I just said, eh, I, you know, I'll wait, wait, wait. And I did. So found it cheap recently on Blu-ray. It's the nun. And I went into this honestly uh, thinking I wasn't going to like it at all. And... It turns out this was actually pretty good. This is one of the best uh, entries in the series, I think. Uh, behind the original, uh, The Conjuring. I really, really enjoy that film a lot. The Conjuring 2, not so much. Uh, the Annabelle series, you know, hit and miss for me. I still haven't seen the last one, so we'll see. But this one, you know, this one definitely had a lot of the bad CGI that I can't stand. But there was enough... There was enough organic filmmaking here that I, I thought was really, really chilling and well done. I was willing to overlook a little bit of bad CGI, you know, decent storyline, some plot holy stuff here and there. The acting is not fantastic, but it's also not horrible. 
this was just a, a solid entry. Like, I, I thought it was a lot better than I was going to receive. So, you guys should check out The Nun if you haven't. Especially if you haven't because you've heard it was bad. Make up your mind for yourself. Alright, got a late 80s classic sort of, uh, it's, it's kind of a weird little anthology film with a wraparound. It's mainly the wraparound story, but this is a hard one to explain, but this was a really cheesy classic from the 80s. It's After Midnight. Um, I kind of went, I, I took a chance on this. I, I don't really hear a lot of people talk about this film. Uh, I'm going to have to do some more research on it. And watch it a few more times, but I, I had a good enough time, you know, anything from the 80s is usually really good, and I just, you know, go for it, it's my favorite period, so, uh, you know, don't let me be the letter of the law, more so just like, uh, the spirit of the law, I guess, uh, I, I had a good time with it, I really don't have any complaints, it wasn't, you know, the greatest thing I've ever seen, but just had that, you know, good nostalgic feel that I guess, uh, presses into my, my brain perfectly for me to enjoy it. Speaking of 80s nostalgia, not that I lived in the 80s, I was born in 93, but I feel like I lived through the death of the 80s and saw a lot of that culture you know, really early in life and I, I definitely shaped it. It's definitely why I'm into metal and uh, so, so damn much into metal and horror. So anyways, uh, Hollywood uh, Chainsaw Hookers. This is a short little ditty. I'm not really sure what year this came out. I know it's from the 80s, but, you know, it's a uh, shot on video, really, really low budget, sort of gory comedy horror, black, definitely a black comedy. Uh, it's pretty ridiculous, man. It, you know, you know what you're going to get with that name. It's, uh, I feel like it's uh, very similar in a... Uh, like atmosphere, direction, all that sort of stuff. It's very similar to like uh, Jackie Kong's Blood Diner or The Being, in my opinion. Uh, I had lots of fun with this. I've been waiting to see it for a long time. Cheap Blu-ray, you know, found it. It was just like, okay, screw it, let's go for it. So you guys should definitely check out Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers if you have not. All right, that's all the Blu-rays. Well, I guess this one technically is a combo pack with a Blu-ray in it, but I failed to uh, notice when I purchased that this is actually a 4K of VFW. Luckily, I do have uh, 4K compatibility. I just haven't begun actively buying them. So as it turns out, this is my first 4K release that I've ever purchased. And this was a ton of fun. Really, really throwback, like total fucking uh, uh, 80s horror worship. And, you know, tons of uh, awesome people in it. Fred Williamson is awesome in this. I was so excited to see him in this. And, you know, the rest of the cast is awesome. The acting is fantastic for this style of movie. There's gore and brutality and adventurous killings and all sorts of good stuff. You know, one track plot, not much gonna go on there, but uh, just a really good, gruesome, fun time. I had a, I had a lot of fun with VFW, so you guys should definitely check that out. Picture quality off the charts, by the way. Okay, this is one, as we get back into uh, the DVDs that my buddy Brandon just gave to me. Um, I don't know why I put off getting this film for so long. I've seen it so many times in so many different circumstances. Uh, it's uh, obviously a remake of two uh, other classic films, uh, namely The Omega Man and uh, The Last Man on Earth with uh, Vincent Price. So. I Am Legend with uh, Will Smith. This came out when I was pretty young, so I saw it quite a bit, like I said. Can't say it's one of my favorites, but it is something that I've always wanted to pick up. Just never really actively did so because I'd seen it so many times, but yeah, here it is. Found my found its way to me uh, through just a, a good friend of mine. So thanks, Brandon, if you're watching this. I'm definitely going to give this, uh, this copy, you know, some more miles for sure. <laughs> Watch it a few more times. I haven't seen it in years, so. I am legend. Good stuff. Got quite a few more, so, uh. Hunker down, everybody. Next one is Shortwave. 
this was uh, this started out really really effective and like uh, emotionally tumultuous uh, I I was affected by the setup of this movie more than the actual execution of the climax or any of the actual shots of the monsters in this. This was a cool, cool, cool concept that I felt fell a little short in the execution. I don't really have too many problems with it. Even the CGI monster is really not all that bad. It's, it's cool the way they did it. But um, I just feel like this movie fell a little bit short of how fantastic it could have been with such an excellent concept. So, there it is, shortwave. You should definitely still check that out. <laughs> Not a lot of bad, bad, bad stuff in this update for a change. That's really cool, huh? <clears throat> okay, next up here. I spoke too soon. It's the remake of The Fog. I'm just kidding. It's not that bad. Um, I, I, people that are just diehard John Carpenter, The Fog, from, uh, you know, obviously, uh, I think that was like 79 or 80 or something, when, whenever The Fog came out. I love that film to death. So I hear a lot of haters talking about this film saying it's just, you know, they ripped off the name and the premise and just filled it up with bullshit CGI. Honestly, I see what they're saying. It's not at all even the same style of movie at all. It, I, I feel like it has zero of the charm of the original. And yet, it's it comes from that period in my life where... This, this style of horror was just in, you know, I was very young, so I kind of have a soft spot for it. And uh, honestly, watching it, you know, recently again, I thought it was pretty good. So, check it out, guys. Oh! Nice little sneeze there. Excuse me, guys. Alright. This next one here is a pretty good slasher that I picked out recently. It's probably a dollar at Dollar Tree, I think most likely to die nothing groundbreaking here this is a very run-of-the-mill slasher and not even one of the best ones that i have seen recently but my battery's low so i'm gonna check on that real quick i'm hoping that that means yeah cool i have a little bit of time left. anyways slasher modern uh when, when did this come out 2016 this is definitely like just in the gigantic bucket of uh, overdone slasher movies like decent setup i really liked what it had to offer but it's really just a carbon copy of its 80s uh you know ancestors so if you're into that like i am definitely check it out it was a solid slasher movie all right next one we have is it's kind of an anthology, it's just two stories, one by Stephen King and one by Clive Barker, and the film is made by Mick Garris, Quicksilver Highway. This was a really, really cool, cheesy, cheesy, uh, when did this come out? I think it's the early 90s, no, it's actually the late 90s, uh, 1997, so more of that beautiful nostalgia that I've been talking about this entire update. This came out in a period where the style of film, you know, it's just imprinted on my mind. It's very, very nostalgic to watch something like this, even if I've never seen it, because the style of filmmaking is just there. Like, you can see it visually. There's just, it, it, it reeks of the 90s. So, naturally, I just have this massive soft spot for it. But this is a really, really cheesy, cheesy-ass film. Um, not something I would expect from... Uh, tooting Stephen King and Clive Barker's names. I would have figured it would have been a lot, lot better. But even still, pretty fun stuff. And uh, if you're a fan of the, uh, you know, cheesy stuff from the 90s, then this is, uh, this is for you. All right. Speaking of really, really cheesy movies from the late 90s, early 2000s, got a lot of stuff from that period in this uh, update. Got these two here. These are really, really low budget, strange little releases. We have a Sleepy Hollow High and American Vampire. American Vampire having Carmen Electra on the cover, even though she is a very minute role in the film. 
and then you know sleep away oh sorry sleepy hollow high a very extremely low budget super cheesy slasher movie uh taking place on halloween which is really really cool both of these like i said the production value is absolute shit especially in sleepy hollow yeah sleepy hollow high but if you're into really cheesy flicks these are going to deliver especially american vampire it's a comedy horror really but it's so poorly executed it almost feels serious and just absolutely pathetic at times so <laughs> it was a pretty entertaining watch uh yeah very random acquisitions but i'm happy to have them so there's that all right just a couple more for you guys this one i have been sitting on for so damn long i must have bought this at a food for less maybe going on 10 years ago they don't sell movies there anymore you guys get the picture right so anyways this is a solid ass vampire flick as well can't believe i'm saying that but i have been coming into this influx of great vampire films lately so this one here innocent blood this one came out uh well 1992 i do believe so much more of that awesome nostalgia that like just wonderful 90s nostalgia this movie does not hold back it's pretty gory and violent the storyline is absolutely awesome i've never seen a gangster vampire movie before so this was really really cool you should definitely check out innocent blood if you haven't all right and that brings us to the final film in this update uh do not get this one confused with a 1930s movie. This is 1941's The Black Cat. I found this at Swap Meet some time ago. Finally gave it a watch. And as it turns out, this is a so classic haunted house sort of movie. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say. A haunted house classic horror movie from the 40s. You guys, you guys get it. This has all the cliches. This plays like a Scooby-Doo episode. It's absolutely fantastic. So classic and cheesy and fun. Uh, super happy to know about it. And I didn't even know it existed before I got this. I had only known about the 30s movie, which I still don't have. So imagine my surprise when I came up across, you know, another movie bearing the same title, different year, turned out to be awesome as well. So you guys should definitely seek out the black cat. And that's going to bring it to a close. Hope you guys have enjoyed. This is a pretty large update. And I'm going to get to you guys uh, another one pretty soon here. I'm going to get through uh, November. And then we're going to probably get a couple smaller updates going in uh, December. So... That's about it for the updates uh, in the coming future. Definitely going to continue to get the overview videos, and I think there's another one about to publish tomorrow. Um, so you guys should definitely, you know, keep up with that. I'm going to keep all the overviews going and finish that up by the end of the year, and then we'll move on into 2021. Like I said, got all sorts of other uh, horror content coming up, whether and whether it be uh, about books or singular reviews, or franchise reviews. I would also really enjoy some suggestions what you guys would really like me to talk about. So there's that. Leave a comment down below if you got any questions about anything as well. And uh, as always, I sing for three metal bands if you don't know, so there's going to be links provided down there. You can go check out our social media. It would be really appreciated if you did that. And uh, that's about it, guys. I will see you guys really soon with something else. I don't know what it will be right now, but it will be soon. So take care, guys. Have a happy holiday. Happy Thanksgiving. Everyone be safe. And I'll see you guys next time. Dual 666 out. Keep on creeping. And you guys know the drill. Got to turn off the, ca the camera all awkward. Later, guys.